Today, we're going to be looking at doing a gait assessment in a standard clinic room, which is about three and a half metres by three and a half metres. And not always can we access a hallway to do a gait assessment because it's a shared area. And with the new restrictions with COVID and the like, we don't necessarily want to be in a mixed area. We want to stay in the confines of our clinical room. So to do that, we're going to use this 65 centimetre square mat. Our patient, we're going to walk them over the mat. We're going to capture five steps of the left foot and five of the right. And this is great because this is capturing the data that you can't see because you can't get behind the client to see what's going on. And it's difficult to analyse the timings always. So this is the data and you would get a live feed as well as a recording. You can see at the top of the screen, the ground reaction force for the left is green and the right is red. To the mid screen to the right is the ground reaction force in three box protocol. And you can see the heel is uh, separated from the forefoot in that particular graph. And down the bottom is the peak pressure timing and that's in the mast area. As we look at the averages of those steps, we have 344 kPa in the left, 396 in the right, and you see back on the left, there's a, a heavier loading through the left distal hallux. Then we can actually go into what we call the foot parameters box. And these tables tell us all about the center of force excursion index and the variables. As you can see, there's a 32% difference from left to right in the center of force index. You can see the peak pressure, there's a variation. And as we scroll down to looking at what's happening in the heel, we can see that there is a heel maximum force percentage of body weight, 51% to the left, 46 to the right, and the heel loading is coming off at a different angle also. We can then also look down at the midfoot maximum force. And again, we can see there's a significant difference, a 71% difference between the left and right. These are the things that you're not going to be able to see very clearly with your eye, within the confines of a small room. The system then generates an automatic report. These reports are fantastic for making sure that your assessment isn't diluted by word of mouth and that it's clearly explained to everybody. You'd give this to your patient, you might send it off to the referrer, and of course we use them here at our facility for reporting to the NDIS and other bodies about our diagnosis and our assessment and what we're going to do going forward. If you're a mentor in a clinic or you're a young podiatrist or physiotherapist wanting to learn more, the best way is to look at this data and take it to your peers and say, look, this is the client I saw, this is what we found, this is what I'm prescribing, and discuss it in an open group to better improve your knowledge and theirs. If you're interested in this small map, you can go to our website, advancedpressuremapping.com.au, 